Okay, so chapter 10 is about text layout and really it has a lot of uh, tags that we use to basically lay out the things on your web page. So as I mentioned last time, we have paragraph tags where we can, we do the open P and the close P and that actually separates text into different paragraphs. So in this example here, we have uh, the body tags, the open and the close body, and there's just a bunch of text inside of it. And so all it really is gonna output is just one big long paragraph. But if you use the paragraph tags inside of the body and in within some of the text, wherever you want the paragraph separated, then it'll actually, it'll show paragraphs with spaces in between them. So that's your paragraph tags. And then of course we have the BR and you can have the slash there. It's actually, if you have the slash, it'll be space and then a slash, uh, or you can just uh, have the BR and that's it. Either way works. Okay, the only difference between them, or I don't know if I want to say the only difference, but the main difference is that the paragraph tags will have automatic um, spacing around the paragraph. And the BR, it just starts the content after the BR on the next line. So let me go ahead and just give an example of that. Okay, so I already have a a page started off here. I have my open and close HTML, open and close head. So let me go ahead and add my body tags. Okay, so there's my body tags and I just, I'm just gonna put text here and that's it. So then I will save and then I will open up the the file in the browser. I have it in my downloads. It's in my 1311 folder and it is called Lab 2 Cardiness. Okay, so there we go. It just says text there. Now, um, if I type in next line, and save and then refresh. Now it says text next line. But if I put a BR before it or before next line, save and then refresh. And now we have content on the next line. Well, what happens if I put this with a P or a paragraph tag, paragraph tags, because there's an open and a close. We save and refresh. And now there's space around it above and below. So that's your paragraph tags. And of course you can't tell there's anything below, but if you had text underneath it, then you would see it. So let me go ahead and do that. Text. Save and refresh. And now even though more text doesn't have uh, paragraph tags around it, the paragraph tag above it provides the line underneath next line. All right. Okay, so that's a spacing of your text. Very important. You will definitely have to do that pretty much with every web page. Okay, so now let's look at ordered and unordered lists. And as you can see on the example on the bottom here, there's one that has an OL and one that has a UL. And that pretty much makes sense. OL means ordered list and UL means unordered list. And basically an ordered list actually has, uh, it's alphanumeric depending on how you want it to be. Now ordered list automatically has one, two and three. and uh, if you want it one, two, three, that's basically something that you might want in order. So that's why it's called ordered list. Unordered list is a list of things that are related, but it doesn't really matter. The order doesn't really matter. So you could have like, 
if if you wanted to use an ordered list, you might the question might be, what are your favorite movies starting with number one? So then number one would be your most favorite movie and number two would be your second favorite and number three would be your third favorite. But if you had an unordered list, the question would just be list three of your favorite movies. So it wouldn't be in order. Okay, so basically, again, you have your OL and you have your UL. Notice as that there is an open and a close for both OL and UL. And they are typically listed um, uh, on the same level of the line. And all the LIs or list items are listed inside or they're nested within the OL or UL. And also know that each item in the list has an LI open and close tag, open, close, open, close. So this is actually uh, similar to what tables might look like. Tables you have like this would represent the this entire thing would represent a row and then everything inside would be columns. So ordered list and then we have your different columns or your list items in between. So uh, just kind of have that in mind. But for now we'll just be doing the lists ordered and unordered for now. Okay, uh, then we also have, oh, actually, let me go ahead and give an example of that. So what does an ordered if list look like? So I click OL, I'm gonna do an ordered list and list item one, list item two. And depending on how many items you want in your list, you just put as many uh, LIs as you want. And in this situation, I only want two in an ordered list. So if I were to do save and then refresh, now we have an ordered list, one and then two. So if I were to change that, I just put a one in there, save and refresh. And now there's a number one. Well, it's really quick and easy to change it to an unordered list. You just take off the O for ordered and put in a U, save and refresh, and now we have two bullets. And um, it's always a good idea. It's, it's a, once you know the codes you want to, or once you know the tags, you want to uh, take advantage of time, I guess and you could actually start copying and pasting things. So by copying and pasting list items, one, two, four, so it's gonna be eight, eight list items here. So if I were to save and then refresh, now I have eight items in the list. So again, as many list items as you have, that's how many items you have in the list. Oh, and uh, just so you know, you could also say um, within here that by the default, it's just a, a black circle as the bullet, but you can, and then by default with the ordered list, you would have by default numbers, but you can actually in this tag here, specify what you want as the bullet. Do you want squares, dashes, whatever? You can specify that in there but we're not covering that in this chapter or at least in this class, but just a little added information there. Okay, so then we have definition lists and definition lists look very similar to what we just did with um, bulleted lists or uh, just lists in general. You have your open DL, you have your closed DL, you have DT representing the term. So coffee is the term and then DD is the definition. And again, we have term and then we have definition, term and then definition. Very similar to what we just did earlier, but now we have two items within the definition list. So, uh, and this is how it would look here. So you have your term and then your definition kind of indented there. So let's see, um, 
let's go ahead and do, I will go ahead and get rid of this. And always remember your indentations, DT. Okay, so then we change this to DL. That's a definition list. And then I only have one definition in there. I'm saving and refreshing, and now you see that it has first and then def. It's automatically uh, indented for the definition. And then, of course, if I wanted to have more, I just copy that and then paste it, just depending on what you just copied. Save and then refresh. Now we have three definitions. Okay. Oops. Okay, that's it for the definition list. Now here is uh, the address tags. We have your open and close address. And basically it, it just makes it look like you see here, it says article by professor, New York, USA. And you really just notice that um, uh, this right here, it is, um, it is a link because we have this a tag or this um, this link tag here. So here is your open link tag and here is your close link tag. So that's something that we're going to look at at ne next chapter. But just because it has, you know, just because it's blue doesn't mean uh, that it has anything to do really with the address. They just happen to add that there. And then also notice that we have your BR. And in this situation, we don't even have the slash. We just have your BRs to start on the next line. So if I were to um, do that one, I'm just going to get rid of everything. If I were to do the address, so we have your open and then we have your close and then we have um, name oops, br address br and then new york so if i were to do save and refresh on the browser so now you have what an address would look like. So if I didn't, you don't even have to have the BRs there, but it's only for visual and it's really visual for, you know, whoever's looking at it. So you see here now it's on the same line, but mainly the address is for, you know, other, uh, maybe other search engines or something else that's looking for like it says, making it easier for applications to find the information needed. So for example, mapping or generating references. So uh, the BRs make it visually appealing for us, but it's really for applications to find information. And actually a lot of these tags are like that. So for example, this article tag here, it's meant for news articles. So um, we as web developers, we can, you know, just list information, you know, like just listing an article if we wanted to, but if you wanted it to be uh, searchable or, or to make it known that this is an article, you can use the article tags. And here we have your heading one tags. So this one's just going to be a little bit bigger and then we have a paragraph inside. Okay, and let's Okay, so then I will go ahead and I'm just going to double click address. And just re So I just changed address to article. I save and then refresh. And so you can't really tell that there's anything different, but it is still listed as an article. And we could put the H1 tags 
just to make it visually appeal, appealing for us. And then let's see what tag they have. It's just a paragraph tag. Okay, save and refresh, and now it looks more visually appealing. Okay. Aside, uh, another set of tags, and it just says aside. And we have open and close. And basically it's to define related information like part of an article or blog. So just like we had uh, the article up on top, the aside is very similar to it, just defining it, uh, related information. So again, uh, it's just aside, and then we just have uh, a header and a paragraph or to make it visually appealing. So instead of having an article, you would have a side, open a side and close a side, save and refresh. And it looks very similar. Let me go ahead and do a side in here just so we can see the change. There, see it's very similar. Just different purposes uh, for the different things. Now this one is going to be uh, used later on. So definitely keep this one in mind because uh, later on, maybe in a couple of weeks, we'll be doing forms. So you'll have input fields or you'll be creating input fields. And then to submit the information, we're going to create a button. So a button, you I'm sure you're familiar with buttons on the web. And well, let me go ahead and create one. Typically, it says submit. And there's actually, remember earlier, or I, th I think last time, or even before last time too, uh, you have button and then type button here. So that's an attribute to button, but you can also have a submit here to specifically say that it's a submit button, but you can have a button say whatever, whatever you like. And uh, I also want to mention too, uh, well, first of all, there's an open and a close button, and then there's open and close. So basically, if you look at this code here, pay attention to the fact that this is two different buttons. Here's a button up here, and it says click here. And then we have another button underneath it, and that has an image. So here's the image tag again, IMG, SRC, and then the name of the image. And so basically you can click on the image and then that will be a button. Uh, okay, so um, I, there is a question in the quiz about how to create a button. I believe it says to create a button with text. Now, if you were to give me both of these buttons here, you will only get half credit because this is the code for, or this is, this is the tag, or this is the method of putting an image in there, uh, an image button, and this is the method for putting making a button with text and that's all I want there. So that would be the answer. If, if, if the question said text, I'm not completely sure. But so don't put both of them, be sure to just put one. Okay, oh, yeah, let me go ahead and do that on our practice page. So we have button, type, My button's going to say meow. So now if I hit save and then refresh, okay, now we have a button that says meow. And also notice how if I hover over it, it uh, you can see that it changes color just like any other buttons or any other uh, links that uh, change when you hover over it. But if I were to click it, it doesn't do anything because I don't have anything uh, assigned to it. 
and basically when you create forms you assign uh, like an attribute to tell it what happens when you click that button but we'll look at that later if you wanted an image to be pressed img src equals and then like that uh, you would put the image name name in between the quotes there now when it comes to images you would actually have to have the image in the same folder as your HTML file. So let me see if I have, actually, I could just do a star, oops, star dot JPG. Mm. Mm. I'm kind of afraid to choose one. I don't know what these images are, but I'm gonna check it anyway. Okay, that's good. That's uh, just some good stuff. Okay, so this is the image here, but that's a really long, complicated name. So I'm just gonna put uh, meow image. So that's the name of my image. And also notice that I'm copying the entire file name, including JPEG. So if I were to copy that, and then paste it inside of here. And also remember too, very important that it's in the same folder as my HTML file. So I'm looking at downloads, that's the folder that I'm in, but actually I'm not uh, sure if you remember that my HTML file is in the 1311 folder. So this actually needs to be in the 1311 folder. So What I'm gonna do is copy it and then go into downloads, go into 1311, and then paste that image in here. So now I have meow image where my lab two assignment is, my lab two pages. And I will minimize, save and refresh. And now we have the image in the web page, but it's very, very much huge. So actually, to make, uh, um, right now I'm considering whether I'm going too far or not, but I'm gonna do it anyway. You can do height equals, let's just say 100, and then width equals 100. And I should put quotes around that. Notice how the colors were changing as I was doing those changes. And now it looks good. See how the type and then button is in purple, height is red, and then 100 is purple. Now also know that um, when you do height and width, if you ever worked with images, um, this would work perfectly if it was exactly the same height and width the image was the same height and width, but if it's not, it's actually gonna uh, skew it a bit. It's not gonna look right, but that's okay. I just wanna show you that you can do this. Okay, so if I save and then refresh, now we see that the image is much smaller. And in addition to having uh, and also remember too that it is a button. I put this image inside the button tag so you can see that when I hover over it it changes a bit and let me go ahead and put a name like let's just say it's the title of the page I'll save and refresh so now we have name and then uh, the button let me go ahead and put an h1 a heading tag h1 heading tag save and refresh and now name is on top the heading one puts a space underneath it, and then the button's on the bottom here. Okay, and actually, since I'm already here, uh, to make, let's actually get rid of this button and just make it into a an image. So if I save and then refresh, 
Now it is just a regular image. Notice how I hover over it and it doesn't make any changes to the color to tell you that you know you can click it. So if I were to go into, let's say I'm gonna go into the SAC web page and I'm gonna right click and save this image, or actually, you know what? I wanna save the image. I actually wanna get this image address so I can use this image on my web page. So if I right click and copy link address, it'll actually copy the address wherever SAC has it saved. So if I go ahead and go in here, oops, that should be a space. If I go in here and then paste that entire website, oh, notice how it has just SAC, it doesn't have .jpg. So what that meant, this is actually a, a clickable image. So that actually did not give me what I wanted. So let me do right click. Here we go. Copy image address. That's the address of the image. So just note that there's two different uh, links you can copy. So now if I uh, replace this image with, there we go. And it's actually SVG file. So now if I save and then refresh, and actually it wasn't just, if you look on the web page here, it's not just this small image. This entire thing is the image with the uh, Alamo Colleges and San Antonio College. So, so the entire thing is showing up. Now it's too small. So if I change the height and the width to 200, save and refresh, and now it's a little bit bigger. And then of course you maybe can play around with it to see whatever uh, size you wanted. Change it to 400 and now it's twice as big. So anyway, so that's how you, um, whoops, that's how you put an image into a web page by using, it's not an image that you have saved, but it's an image somewhere else that you can put into your page. Okay. Let me go ahead and continue. Anyway, so that's, uh, I started off with button. Remember those, are, these are two different buttons here. This is a text button. This is an image button. Uh, be sure to know which is which. Okay, now we have caption. Caption, uh, basically you can uh, do to be printed next to a table like this right here. But as you can see, it, it looks like it's part of the table there. Um, uh, next, uh, ne or, yeah, next week we will be doing tables and we will not be using captions. We are just going to have, if you want a title up on top, you just have a row and then you put the title in that row. Um, just be sure that you know the difference between having a caption and not having a caption. Let's see. And there is a way, notice how it says this is our table. So that's really, it really just looks like it's one row, like merged together. And these different, yeah, first column, second column, third column, these are the way the columns are. First, second, and third. Now you can have text like this title up on here that's not in a column and that's actually using a, a span tag to tell you, okay, well, I want this content to span across the top. And that's how we'll be doing it, but that's next class. So anyway, uh, and I really don't wanna get into this, this table stuff here. Um, yeah, so just know that this, this is pretty much what it looks like here. Um, this could be a bit confusing, but I really just want to go through that in next class. I mean, next week. All right, uh, the site tags. Um, basically, you see that here, 
is just open and close, just like we would have something like um, the, the title tags, maybe something like that, that it's inside some text. Okay, and let's see. Hmm. We actually don't have the close angle bracket here because this is an image and then we have a paragraph underneath the image with the open and close site. And notice how it just, uh, it just makes it uh, italic. And it's really not, uh, it's not really together. Let me go ahead and show you. Okay, so let me go ahead and get rid of the image. Actually, let me go ahead and leave it there. Okay, and if we just have, if we just wanna cite it, we just put the paragraph tags. It's really not part of it, but it just makes it look better. Okay, and then of course close paragraph. Oops, didn't mean to do that capital. Okay, save and refresh. And now we just have text down here. And actually, uh, I'm not sure if you noticed last time, I, I actually, uh, I'm actually clicking in this white area here. And then if I drag over to the right, and it's not doing it. There we go. It didn't want to do it from the side here, I guess, because this text is here. But uh, if you click and then drag up, notice how the San Antonio College image, even though it's uh, the image is just here and there's white space on the top and on the bottom. And you can't really tell because, you know, the background's white. But if you click down and you drag up, you can see that this whole area here is the image. If I were to click down here, you can see that it's still an image. You're still clicking on the image. For some reason, they have white space up on top and on the bottom. So, so anyway, that's just how you can tell where the image is. If you're thinking, well, why is the text all the way down here? Well, it's because they have white space underneath that image. Okay, so going back to the site, um, we don't really need this image tag to have the site. It's really, uh, again, just for other web pages to know what is what. So if I were to just get rid of that image and then refresh, you still have that comment there. You really don't need the image. So you can pretty much cite anything that you wanted to just by using those site tags. Oops. All right, let's go back to the text. And we are 10 minutes away from our break. Okay, so entities this we actually covered last time remember we did the copyright symbol you just do the n ampersand and then copy and then uh, semicolon well there's many different uh entities you can have and here's a list a table on the bottom here there's a non-breaking space there's the less than sign greater than sign uh, copyright trademark okay and also also know that they can also be represented with numbers as well. If you've seen, um, you know, how you know that um, all the characters on a computer are have a, a binary description of it, and there's also a decimal representation of it. And this is what this is where this is where it's from, or that's where it's from here. But these are entities that you can use in HTML if you don't want to use the numbers or you don't know the numbers. These are easier to remember. Um, one thing in particular about this uh, non-breaking space is I'm not sure if you've ever noticed web pages. If you um, create a web page and you have a space inside or if you have a space inside of the name, 
you see how here's a lab percent 20. Uh, that is actually because I have a space in between the, the uh, or inside of the file name. So uh, you'll ac you actually might see that, uh, that break as well in here. And I highly recommend never putting a space inside of your um, file names because that just makes things more, more difficult. Okay, especially, well, I mean, here when you're saving it on your own computer, it's not so terrible, but if you create web pages for a company, you really don't want to have spaces. If you really wanted something with a space, you would use like an underscore, which would be something like file, save as, and you would do something like lab two underscore and then whatever. So if you really wanted a spacer, you would do something like an underscore or of course a dash or something like that, but underscore is more common. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so oh yeah, and just be sure that you know that it's case sensitive. So just be sure that when you're typing this entity, uh, the text is lowercase. All right, um, then we have your figure tags. And basically, you can uh, label an image or something like that. So let me go ahead and undo and change this, this line so that it has figure around it. Figure tags. And also notice that the open is above the image and the close is after the image. And let me just take out the extra stuff. See, so as you can see here in my example, it is actually getting a bit cluttered. So this is a really good time to practice our wonderful indentations. So we know that, oops, I totally got rid of the H1. That's fine. Oops. Sometimes it doesn't like it when you highlight things, but if you just click right before and do tab, it'll indent what's in there. So let's go ahead and save and refresh. So now we have your image there and no figure. Okay, so it's just not showing on the screen, but it is a figure. And it's basically just to show what the content is and that it's a figure. Okay, the same thing with fig caption. If you, instead of doing figure, you just put fig caption, same thing. Save and refresh. And the same thing, it's fig caption. It's just uh, labeling it as a figure for an image. Okay, mark, okay, mark is something that you'll have to know for your assignment. And basically, just like I have highlighted in this PDF, you can highlight text within a, a, a web page if you wanted to. And it's commonly used when you uh, search within a page. So let's just say, let's just make this heading into a highlighted highlighted text. So if I do mark, and also notice too, that I had it's in a heading one. And it's okay that I'm using it within the text. And just like in here, it might be within a paragraph, but that's fine. But also notice how I have name and then the name, <clears throat> excuse me, the name is highlighted. And then it has a heading. So I didn't make it so that it says heading one and then mark 
and then close heading one and then close mark, that kind of makes it inconsistent. So we want to make sure that the mark, the heading one is, uh, is wrapping the mark tags inside of it and then the name. So now if I do a save and refresh, now you can see that name is highlighted because it has the mark tags around it. All right. Okay, then we also have meter tag and that is also a tag that we'll need for us for our assignment. Again, notice how it says meter open, or this is the open meter tag, this is the closed meter tag. Then we also have an open and a close again. Just be sure that when you create your web page, you're only going to display one of them. And basically, it's just a visual to uh, show certain values. And let me go ahead and do that. We just do meter and then value. As you can see here, the value can be pretty much uh, anything you like. As, as you can see here, there's a percentage. And then right here, you can have uh, just a whole number. Also notice that you can specify the minimum and the maximum. So let me just do the, the basic. So I'm gonna just do value three. I'm not going to do the minimum or maximum. And then I will just do, and then you have to put something in, in between. So meter value three. And let me go ahead and do point zero six five. 65%, whoops, not point zero. There we go. Save and refresh. There we go. So that's 65% of the bar. So let me go ahead and do the other one also. So if I were to do value is three, and I'll just say one fifth, and it makes sense. Minimum is zero, maximum is, let's say 10. And it shouldn't matter what it says on the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. And there we go. So the max is 10 and the value is three, minimum is zero. So yeah, that makes sense. Let's say if I change this to 15, save and refresh, you'll see that it's even smaller. It's a smaller, green bar. There we go. So there. Very good. And it, now it's just a visual representation. It also mentions that there's a progress tag that we'll look at in just a second, where you can actually monitor files like uh, you'll be using JavaScript to monitor like a download or whatever. But we'll see that in just a second. Okay, the navigation tags, this might be something that you'll see often. It basically tells you, um, or basically tells the browser that uh, it's a group of li links. So right here, as you can see from before, there's an ahref. So that's the open tag, or yeah, open tag for links. And this is the close A. So that's the close tag for links. So each one of these here are links to different places. So there's a link to home, a link to CSS, a link to JavaScript, and a link to jQuery. Um, so there's just four links here. And also notice this character here, this line is actually called the pipe character. And if you look at your keyboard, it should be right above the enter key. It, you'll probably have to do shift to actually do that character. And that's a common character in between, uh, uh, in between, yeah, I guess I would say, yeah, links. Uh -huh. It's in between links like it has it here. So let me go ahead and do that one. And so ahref is the tag to create a link. href is wherever it goes. 
and it would usually be something like index.htm and then close and then whatever you want the user to see will go in between here so click here for um, the index page and then close a to actually complete it as a link so let me go ahead and press tab on this one oops because both of those are inside the body tag. So let me go ahead and save and refresh. So now we have a link. Remember I said that whatever's inside the open and close A tags, that's what the user sees. So if I were to click on it, it will try to go to index.htm, but I don't have that file. So it gives me an error. But, well, since we're here, let's go ahead and try that. So the file that I'm looking at here on the title bar is lab to Cardenas. So let's go ahead and link to this page that I have here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Copy that file name and then remember it has to be in the same place where it's linking to unless you actually tell uh, the, the link to go somewhere else. And that would be the absolute value and, and that's next chapter. So, but for now, at this point, we're only working in the same folder. Unless of course you're doing that absolute link, but uh, that's next chapter. Anyway, so let me go ahead and replace this index.htm with mypage.htm. So we're gonna link to this page here so if I were to do save and then refresh, now, um, now it's blue because it actually, I've actually opened that page already. But again, it, are, it just says click here for the index page, but this ahref makes it into a link. So you click it and that's what I have on that index page. It's just a bunch of Gs. So actually, let me go ahead and uh, go into my page and I'm gonna go ahead and edit it with Notepad. And then I'll go ahead and change it to a bunch of Ws. Save and refresh. And that was the page. So you can just go back and then click on the page again and it's that page with Ws. So that's your link right there. But we'll cover that a little bit more next time or in next chapter. But anyway, so that is one link. Now let me go ahead and create multiple links. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this line. I don't mean to indent it like that. Oops. There we go. So now there's four. And the only reason why it's wrapping is because my uh, my notepad is small. So there, now it's not wrapping. So we have four links here. So let's go ahead and see what happens. If I save and refresh and have four links, there it is. See how it's all continuously on one line. Now, if I do that pipe character right after it, I do a space and then pipe and then space then that uh, makes it look a little bit better. But notice how I don't have any paragraph tags. I don't have any breaks. So that means that the they're still gonna end up on the same line. So if I do save and then refresh, it's on the same line, but look at how much better it looks because they have divisions in between. And then of course, if you wanted them on different lines, you could just add the break after that or maybe even instead of the, the pipe, you just put the BR. Now just save it and refresh it and see how it's starting it on the next line. And of course you use the paragraph tag, but there'd be more space in between, but that might be a good thing. It might be a bad thing. It's up to you when you create your page. Go ahead and do paragraph tags around that one. So this one gets indented. 
I'll go ahead and do a save. And of course, remember that the paragraph tags could be on the same line or it could be uh, wrapped around it. But actually, typically, it's on the same line. So I'm going to do that here. Typically, don't have to press enter and put it on new line. And I'll just make it bigger just so you can kind of see. Paragraph tags should be on the same line like that. Well, they typically are. They don't have to. They're just typically like that. So I'm going to go ahead and save and refresh, and we'll see how the uh, the last line will have space above and below it like that. So it just depends on uh, what you or the company you're working for wants it to look like. Okay. And also know that since all of these eight uh, H refs have my page side HTML, I could click on any one of these links and it'll take me to that one page. And in that case, if you wanted to change it into make it go to another page, like uh, let's say test here. I'll go ahead and copy that file name and then put it here. And then save and refresh. And note, note how I changed on the last link here. So I'll just go ahead and click that last link. And that's what I have for uh, test.html. OK. But anyways, um, so going back to what the what section we were on in the test, we were on the navigation tag. So yes, this was a bunch of links, and yes, you put the pipe sign between, but to actually tell uh, the browser to recognize that it's, it is a, a list of links, uh, you just put the nav tags around it. And also know that it's uh, useful for the screen reader software. And I mentioned that for uh, anyone who's visually impaired, the, there's software out there that'll read the screen for them or actually you know, help navigate between uh, you know, different programs or anything you can do on the computer by using that software. So that really helps um, with visually impaired people. And uh, it really isn't much of a difference. A lot of these things, you know, it's not really a difference with what you see on the page. It's really just for other things like uh, the screen reader. So I'm going to go ahead and save and then refresh there. So you really don't see a change there. And also know too that I am being bad. I'm not indenting like I should. So and actually, that one H1 shouldn't even be there. So I'll go ahead and do that. We need to take that H1 out because that's not part of the navigation. But it should be indented. There we go. So all of those are part of the navigation. All right. OK, navigation, what's next? The progress bar. We looked at the progress. We looked at another bar. Do you remember what the other bar was called? Remember, we can change the different, uh, what the, the image looks like by specifying what uh, number it is or whatever uh, numbers you want to represent. It was the meter tag. Now this one, it just represents numbers in a visual way, but the progress bar, we can actually use JavaScript to change that image to make it look like it's actually increasing. If you've ever installed software, you, you have some sort of a image that uh, shows you the, the progress of ins the installation. So basically this is, it, if it were like a web page, this is how it, uh, is represented. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's get rid of this navigation. Okay, and so we have tab progress, and we have um, attributes here. So we're going to do the value is 46, and we're specifying a max of 100. 
And notice how there's nothing in between the progress tags. Oops, and see how very particular things are. Let's see what happens if I don't include these quotes. So I'm going to save and refresh. Okay, there we go. Nothing happened. So always remember, you know, if nothing happens here, be sure that you check any uh, small details that you might have missed. So I put that quote back there and I'm saving and refreshing. And there's our progress bar. So if I go ahead and change that number, save and refresh, and now it changes to whatever the number is. You can change the max. Saving and refresh. So 88 out of a max of 999. Okay, cool stuff. All right, so here are some time tags. And again, these tags, uh, just like many of the other ones that we had uh, earlier, you you really can't it really doesn't uh, change what you're viewing it only uh, it's only for applications or devices to uh, recognize that there's a time or a date here so again you would just go ahead and let me get rid of the progress bar we would just do and you know you can type whatever text and then just put time and then and oops um, close time and then it recognizes that it's a time and you know uh, you can put anything in between there really uh, this is 10 this one says August 1st so uh, for this example here let's go ahead and try it without um, actually something that doesn't make sense so like it, I'm going to go ahead and put 8 1 but I'm not going to put August in between and we'll see what happens so I'm going to specify date time. 2013, let's actually put 2021. And whatever today is. 2.15, yeah, actually, let me go ahead and leave that 10 a.m. in there to show you that it really doesn't matter. If we do save and then refresh, well, it just has whatever I have, whatever I have typed before the time tag, and then whatever's inside the time tag. What's inside the time tag really doesn't matter. It's just, uh, it just calls the information from this tag here, and you don't see it in your browser. Okay, let's see. Okay, so that is it for chapter 10. So what I want to do now is do um, the brainstorming.